Hi, I'm Jeremy Thake, and I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Graph with Postman today. The first thing you do is you can go over to a browser and you're going to type in aka.ms Graph Postman Workspace. And that's going to take you to Postman's workspace that we've shared. And for you to operate with this, um, what you need to do is fork this into your own Postman collection. And when you do this, you can just go to create a fork here. And that will actually pull it over uh, uh, into here where you'll have to type in what you want to call it. So I'm just going to call that graph. And I'm actually going to put it in my workspace. When I click fork this collection, it'll actually pull it over into my, my workspace. And if we ever change this collection, you can actually do merges and so forth uh, to this. This is similar to what you would get if you downloaded Postman in the Windows, Mac, uh, Linux app as well. Um, but just so you know, to get this to work in the browser, um, if you're not using the app, what you will need to do is go over into your settings and go to um, documentation and download and install the application. Um, and so you can either download the app here and work completely outside of the browser. Or if you want to continue using the browser, you can actually download the Postman desktop agent. And, and when you download this app, you'll see a little agent in your Tool, uh, toolbar in your uh, status window and that will allow you to get get going um, and so the reason you need to do that is when we get tokens um, it's going to make some calls to a rest api and if you don't install the postman agent on the browser you'll get some cause errors showing up in your console in the bottom left so how do we call the graph from here well the collection's all here and you can either call as a on behalf of a user or as an application and if I go in here and just say get users here, you'll see that that's the graph call it's going to be making. Now for this to work, when I click send here, that's that's not going to work because there's there's no token, or in this case, there was an expired token. And so what I need to do is make sure that my authorization header is populated. So if I look at this request, all of the requests in all these folders will inherit the settings at this application folder level for authorization. And you'll see here that there was a token in there, but that's expired. But there's a bunch of setting that's configured here where I need to run get access token. Again, if I run this right now, that will fail. Um, and the reason it will fail, and you can actually see it in the console on the bottom left here, um, is because the, the URL is incorrect because this thing isn't valid. And the reason for that is because we haven't configured our environment. And so what you need to go over and do is inside of your environment variables here is, is fill in uh, a client ID, a client secret, and a tenant ID. And you have to make sure you put them in your current values. Where do you get these values? Well, in whatever developer tenant you're using, um, I have mine as a separate profile here, you'll need to go through and create a brand new application. So I'm gonna go through and click new registration here, and I'm gonna call this Postman Demo Application. And I need to put a redirect URL in so that when Postman requests a token, identity knows where to resend it. Where'd you get that, you say? Well, if you go into um, this authorization configuration here and have I just close that window down, you'll see that there is a, um, a callback um, URL in here um, inside of the on behalf of. So if I go into the on behalf of one, you'll see that there is a callback URL, which I can just go grab. And in here, I can paste that in. And then all I'm gonna need is the client ID from this application. So if I come up to my Microsoft Graph environment, I'm gonna put that in the current value. And then I'm gonna need the tenant ID, which is this one. And then to get the secret, I need to go over to the client secrets here and create one. So I'm just gonna click name it, whatever you wanna name it, and get that client secret and paste that in there and click save. Now I have an environment that I can close this tab down and if I do a view here, I can see all those values. And now I need to just save this configuration for both the application and on behalf of. And now when I hover over these values, you'll see that there's current values for the secret and for the client ID and for the tenant ID. So when I click get new access token, it has actually completed. When I click proceed, it will show me the token. Um, and if I click use token, it will now set that. You'll see that there's a little dot which indicates that there's something that's changed in this config. I do need to click save on that. 
When I go back to get users now and I click run, it will use that token to run that command. And you'll see actually that I'm getting a request denied. So I'm getting a token, but there's not enough permissions in that token for this particular get users to run. And this is where you need to go back into your um, Azure configuration and look at the API permissions for this application. There's only user read here. Because I'm doing an application call, not a uh, delegated on behalf of, I have to click here and type in uh, user.read user all. And when I add that permission, there is one additional thing. It's not granted for the entire tenant. So I need to click grant admin consent here and click yes. Now that isn't enough. If I run that still, it will still fail because we haven't refreshed the token. So I do need to go back to this tab and go get new token and go through that flow again of getting that token and saving it. And now when I run it, when I run it this time, you'll actually see I'll get the information for get users. Now this is for application permission flows. If I'm in, say, I wanna get my profile, um, this won't work straight away because it, it, it hasn't got a token in it either. So when I look at what the authorization is, again, it's inheriting it from the settings of the top level folder. And in that authorization settings here, you'll see that this is also configured and has a client ID and the same secret users. If I do get new token now, um, it'll force me into a login screen. I can sign in with my tenant. I need to give it my password. And then you'll see it says authentication complete. And you click proceed there. Again, I need to click use token and save. And now if I go and use this token to get my profile, um, you'll see that now it's coming back with my demo users profile information, which is, which is pretty cool. And the same thing, if I went to try and get things like, um, you know, my skills, which I don't have any, sorry, or photo, which is going to come back as a binary or no photos, thanks. I'm an admin. Um, oh, sorry. If I just went and did like get files, sorry. Uh, you'll see that it's coming back with nothing, but I am pretty sure I have files in my environment. So if I went over to office, dot com oops office.com and logged in with that tenant information and looked at my OneDrive. I'm pretty sure I have a file in here. And the reason being is I don't have there you go, there's a postman file in there. So what I need to do inside again with this particular thing is I need to go add delegated permissions for files.read. So if I do files.read here and click add um, and just grant admin consent to it. That's the quickest way to force those things through. I will need to go get that token again. So I need to go back to my on behalf of tab on the authorization and get myself a new token. Click use token, save it. And now when I go to get drive and run it, you'll see I'm getting that URL back and you can see there's that file name. So there's, um, you know, both the, running as a user and running as an app um, remembering that you need to make sure you keep going adding the permissions here and granting those permissions for that to work another little gotcha is if you're signed into the browser you're using postman in with an account you need to um, log sign out of it just using normal sign out flows because otherwise when you come here and click get new it's going to keep trying to get you through on that that level so the easiest way to if you want to change the user you're signed in as is to go to office.com and actually sign out as that user. So if I go sign out here, it'll tell me I've signed out. Okay, and now when I go get new access token, I'll get the prompt so I can pick the account I wanna sign in with. Um, I've got that password on speed dial there. And uh, now it will get me the token and I can use that token. And so that's the easiest way to switch between different users if you're trying to run this in various different scenarios. Um, and so we'd love to hear your feedback on all the different things you can do with Microsoft Graph in Postman here. And um, as you can see in my one, what I do is I have a playground here where I've got my own uh, things I'm creating um, based on different environments we've got that we're calling. Um, and you can just inherit the same permissions and tokens inside of your own personal requests outside of the ones we share publicly. So I hope that was useful and uh, please reach out to me, Jay Thake on Twitter um, with your feedback.